It is the most common cause of death in the world. In Europe alone, over 18 million people die every year from this condition. And scientists are still trying to find out how this disease really works. My name is Kevin Steinek and today we talk about cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases generally involve the formation of plaque and the blockage of blood vessels. Depending on where this blockage occurs, heart infects, strokes or peripheral artery diseases might result. As most of you probably know, plaque are aggregations of fat among other cell types. And most of you have probably heard that fatty diets might result in higher risks of developing cardiovascular diseases. This is certainly a contributing factor, however, humans tend to have very high levels of LDL in the blood. LDL are small bodies in the blood which carry fat. It is actually quite surprising, but since we have high levels of LDL, even children have early forms of plaque in their arteries. And in fact, in a study it was actually found that cardiovascular diseases have a very old relationship with humanity. Over 100 mummies were investigated in over four populations. Signs of atherosclerosis were found in all four populations. And these mummies are over 4,000 years old. That means that humans have high tendencies to develop cardiovascular diseases independent from their food. This of course does not mean that there are no higher risks of developing cardiovascular diseases if you eat a lot of burgers. To be precise, there are multiple risk factors which include hypercholesterolemia, hyperglycemia and hypertension. This can be translated in high levels of fat, sugar and high blood pressure. Moreover, age, gender, smoking and other habits also play a fundamental role in developing cardiovascular diseases. There are also genetic factors, but they are rather rare. Okay, there are a lot of remarkable things when you think about cardiovascular research. For example, for quite a long time actually, scientists have thought of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular diseases to exclusively be a fatty disease. However, we now know that this is not entirely true. We say that it is a disease which is caused by fat aggregations, but which also involves different immune cells and their reactions, for example, monocytes and macrophages. You see, especially macrophages, a subset of immune cells, are attracted very early on and they start to migrate into plaque. Here they want to take up fats and they do so until they swell up and become what we call foam cells. And at the same time, smooth muscle cells start to migrate into the plug. They start to form a layer around the cap. And depending on how thick this layer is, plug can now be more stable or unstable. Stable means that the plug just remains and nothing happens. And unstable means that proteases, which are special proteins made up of different cells in the plug, start to destroy the cap. And this now can lead to different outcomes, depending on where it occurs. It can lead to strokes or, for example, heart infarcts. So we had a kind of shift from defining atherosclerosis as a lipid disease to also an immune disease. And this, of course, means that there is a lot of research going on. We can, for example, ask how the migration of these smooth muscle cells actually works. Okay, but those are rather specific questions, right? Why is this important? The answer is, the more precise we understand all of these underlying processes, the more treatments we can develop. For example, these immune cells, which now migrate into the plug, monocytes and macrophages, they need to attach to these artery walls. If we understand how they attach, then we can develop drugs which inhibit these interactions. And in regard to monocytes, for example, we know that so-called chemokine receptors are very important for this process. There was a study in mice which nearly completely depleted atherosclerosis by blocking free chemokine receptor pathways. And that means that we block the attachment between the immune cell and the artery wall and therefore also block the migration. Of course, the development of new drugs is very complex, especially when we think about the immune system. Every time we try to intervene with the immune system, we might have higher risks of developing infections. 
However, the future will show how we can cure atherosclerosis, the most common cause of death. And finally, I want to thank you for listening. If you're interested in this or similar topics, let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be informed about the greatest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya.